Hey guys, welcome back to another tying video with Old Florida. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be tying the Passes Guide Shrimp. This is a super fishy bonefish pattern. You could also throw it for snook and redfish if you'd like down in the Everglades. But mostly I use this for bonefish in Biscayne Bay all the way down to Key West and it has been extremely productive. So first thing I'm going to do, take my thread, start it behind the eye of the hook and wrap back to in between the point and the barb. And I'm just gonna lay a nice clean thread base all the way up to right behind the eye of the hook. Next step is I will take my 16 pound Mason hard mono, cut a section off of that. I'm going to take flat jaw pliers. I'm just going to crimp the front of this just to give it a little bit better holding. I'm just gonna crimp a couple little spaces, if you could see that, just a couple little crimps down that line. So I'm going to go ahead and tie that in right behind the eye of the hook, nice and tight with a couple really tight securing wraps. And I'm going to tie that to where it's one full eye length behind the shank of the hook. I'm going to come in here with my Umqua Bomb beads. This is a four millimeter. And this is a really good all around bomb bead just for general depths of bone fishing. So one to three feet. I do adjust the eyes on most of my flies quite often. So I tie these with three, 3.5, four, uh, six millimeter. So the bead size really depends on the water depth and the current that you're fishing. I'm going to place that bead on my mono with the concave side facing the eye of the hook. I'm gonna push it forward and I'm going to capture it right there. Put a couple really nice tight wraps on this mono all the way up to right in front of the point of the hook. Right on the point of the hook, sorry. We could go ahead and just trim that out and get that out of the way. Then I'm gonna take my thread, work it all the way back to the bomb bead. With my finger, I'm just gonna push that bomb bead forward so it kind of sits pretty vertical, if not tilting a little bit toward the eye of the hook. I'm gonna take my thread, I'm gonna do some parachute wraps and some wraps in front and behind of this bead. Just making sure it's nice and straight and upright. After I got that done, I could take my thread and move it to right where we tied off our, or cut off our mono. Next step is going to be grab some craft fur. I'm going to grab a nice little healthy clump of craft fur. You don't have to go crazy, but don't be shy. So this is pretty decent clump of craft for it's probably like the thickness of a three quarters of a pencil. I'm gonna take my little handy comb, just comb out that under fur. This thing works great for it. Just a couple rakes through here and we got all that under fur out. I'm gonna twist my fingers around. I'm gonna grab those long fibers. I'm gonna stack it to the tips of the desired length. So just gonna stack those long fibers right on top. So once I got my desired shape, that nice little candle wick profile, I'm gonna pinch it with my tie-in hand. I'm gonna measure around two times the length of the shank of the hook. I'm gonna cut these butts flat. Once I got those butts cut flat, I'm gonna do a nice tight pinch wrap, keeping my pointer finger on the shank of the hook so it doesn't roll over the point, over the shank of the hook. And just clean up those butts just a little bit. I actually want to go a little bit lower where the hook shank starts to bend. So it's going to almost be pointing down. You want that because that's going to let water flow and it's going to push that fly. It's going to want to invert the fly. If you tie it just straight off the back of the shank of the hook, it's not going to give you that nice fall that we're looking for. Next up, we got our foxy brush. I'm just going to take my brush. This has been used already. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit of this to give me a cleaner tie-in point. I'm gonna expose some of that wire right there. Just the same length of that craft for that I tied in. And then I'm gonna tie that wire right on top. Oh, I actually cut my thread, but it's not a big deal. Just pull out some from your bobbin and just capture that again and restart it. That wire is extremely sharp. So when you do go over the wire, do it extremely light and cover it with thread almost, and then you can start tying it down tight again. But not the end of the world. Just recapture the thread. 
start tying again. So once I got the foxy brush tied in, this is a 1.5 foxy brush. I'm just gonna comb everything with my fingers toward the bend of the hook. And then I'm gonna start my palmering. It's important that the first wrap is really tight up to the craft fur. And the second or third wrap could be a little bit looser, but I'm only gonna put around three wraps on this. This is just gonna give you a nice little collar, a little bit of extra movement, and a little bit of, it fades the body in better, basically. Um, I'm gonna take my bodkin, I'm gonna poke where I wanna tie it off, and I'm just gonna move those fibers out of the way, give me a really nice clean tie-in point. Then I'm gonna take my thread, lift it up, and now I can put two or three wraps right on that tie-in point. I'm gonna pull everything forward without cutting the brush yet, and then do two or three nice tight wraps right on my capture point, and then move it forward a little bit. So it's gonna be tied on the bottom. I'm gonna take my flush cut pliers. All I'm gonna do is trim that out. Nice little cutout right there. Try to get that wire down if you can, just poke it down. So you get a little bit smoother of a surface and it doesn't want to cut your thread. I'm just gonna clean up this thread body just a little bit, make everything look a little prettier, even though it's gonna get covered up with a brush. I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna move it super tight to that foxy right there. I want that buttered up against that foxy brush. Next up we got our woolly critter brush. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm just gonna pinch this exposing some wire. On this one, you could actually expose a little bit more wire. I could tie this wire in all the way up to this bomb bead just so we know it's super secure. It's important to tie this brush on top of or really far toward that foxy. So it's all the way forward, this woolly critter brush. I'm gonna keep that wire right on the top side of the shank of the hook. And I'm just gonna secure that down with a really, really good amount of nice tight wraps. We don't want this coming unraveled. And that's good. We could take our thread. I put two wraps because I'm gonna invert the fly. And then we could start palmering this woolly critter really far forward, right on top, or sorry, right behind that foxy. The first two or three wraps should be super tight. And then you could kind of go more sparse as you work your way back. We're just trying to make this body not super tight, but we definitely want almost touching wraps. When you get to the jig bomb, we're gonna put one or two, depending on how much room you have. I'm gonna try to sneak two wraps in here, and we're just gonna hide that jig bomb. I'm gonna actually invert my fly again. So now this jig bomb's kind of stuck right deep in there. I'm just gonna take my thread, lift up and capture it, trying to move any material out of the way that I might have captured. So two wraps in front and two wraps behind. And then we could go ahead and trim out this wire. With those flush cut pliers, I'm just gonna push this wire down a little bit so it's less likely to fray my thread and break me off. It still might, but all right, cool. So once we got that, I'm gonna take my handy dandy little comb. Gonna go ahead and comb this out. This little comb makes it so much easier than a bodkin. It really rakes out the bottom of that material, gets all those unstuck fibers really picked out well. And once we got that done, that is pretty much the done tying section of the fly for the most part. I'm gonna come in here with my Mason 16 and I'm gonna take my flat jaw pliers. I'm gonna hold this mason level with the curve facing either forward or back. And I'm gonna put two crimps. One, two. Well, I missed it a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and put another one right in that middle. So what this does when you lay it flat, when I fold these into a V, it has a natural concaved facing forward weed guard. You don't want to put it this way. You want that weed guard facing out and away from the fly. But with this V, all I'm going to do is slide it over that hook shank. I'm going to do two or three capture wraps, pretty loose for the most part. 
I'm gonna take my thumb and my pointer finger on my pointer finger, I'm gonna push on that shank of the hook. With my thumb, I'm just gonna push up on the weed guard, put my pointer finger right behind that mono, and do a bunch of nice tight wraps. Once I got a couple tight wraps there, I'm gonna lift up on the weed guard, do a couple nice tight wraps right up in the front. I'm gonna repeat the same exact thing, two or three really nice tight wraps in the back. Before I whip finish, I'm just gonna kind of measure the length I want that weed guard to be. And then I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna do two sets of three right behind the weed guard. I like it behind the weed guard. I think it just adds a little more protection. And bam, pull that really nice and tight. And then I actually do like to come in here and trim the bottom of this foxy brush. Just trim that hair out of there. If you have rubber legs there too, I either pull them to the side or trim them out. You want that shape of this fly to be very shrimp-like. You want this uh, craft fur facing toward the hook point, so sitting up a little bit. So when this fly falls, it's gonna wanna parachute that craft fur. It's gonna fall hook point up every time, even if you do a super lightweight pattern. This is the done fly. This is Pass's Guide Shrimp. Super easy, super deadly pattern. From Key Biscayne all the way down to Key West. I tie it in a bunch of different colors. Olive and tan, orange, uh, different bead weights. Definitely play a huge role. I even change up for the smaller flies, Bahamas. I do a 2.5 millimeter bead, all pink, on a SL45. Super simple fly, extremely effective for bonefish. Playing with the weights is really important. Light water, light fly, deep heavy current. I add two four millimeters, giving me an eight millimeter tungsten weight. This thing plummets to the bottom, catches a ton of fish. I uh, hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach us at the shop at any time. But as always, we hope to see you guys out on the water.